Hi everybody, Kat here. Today I would like to show you this steal of a deal I found and uh, so it might be a very quick video, it might not, I am painting, but I was at Michael's the other day and I was wandering around and I was looking for a special craft paper that uh, I thought they might have and not with the watercolor paper but with the Crayola stuff. I found this medium weight 90 pound watercolor pad from Createology. So I thought geez this is pretty good for for 90 pounds. I have 90 pound paper and it feels a little thinner than this actually. So anyway I bought it because I want to make um, I make these little accordion books that I often do my color swatches in and I did video uh, myself doing that and if anyone's interested in seeing it leave it in the comments and I will post it. <clears throat> so I wanted to to test this paper out and I think I yesterday I did do a few things now um, I cut off the, the other garbage I was doing, but this is an apple that I did and there's about three layers of paint. None of it came off, which I was quite thrilled about. So now what I'm going to do is wet my brush and see if I can remove any paint to see how it lifts. So you do that with a stiff brush and a, a damp stiff brush and it is lifting. So I can lift out a highlight if I like. Isn't that terrific? Okay, this side I'm doing a tree, but I do want to see how this paper reacts with some masking fluid. So I'm just going to do some gnarly branches here. There's nothing very specific about what I'm doing we can see this will dry and then we can see what it's it does when I remove what the, how the paper reacts when I move the masking fluid. I paid $5.99 for this paper and it is 9 by 12 and so and for 40 sheets and this is why I wanted to try out just just to see if it's complete and utter garbage or if it's actually pretty decent paper. So I'm going to try as many things as I can on this one painting. I'm not going to do Saran, uh, the uh, plastic wrap technique, because I don't, I don't have the time to let it dry really. So I'm just getting several sizes of brushes. And I have a little cut up uh, plastic card as well. And we'll see how the paper responds to the etching. And I'm going to get some green. Okay, so I'm going to use cobalt blue hue and my Quinn gold, and that usually makes a nice green. And I'm going to start with my lightest green. And we just want to see how this paper reacts to the wet paint because after all it is watercolor and it has to be able to it doesn't matter how little you paid for it, it, it the difference between regular paper and watercolor paper is that it should be able to withstand a little bit of of, of water and if it can't there's just no point in in having it so I'm just kind of doing an imaginary scene here. And while this is wet, I'm going to use a darker green. And we're gonna see how it works. If it blends in well, if it bleeds. And it does, look at that, that's quite nice. And you can see I'm just dabbing my brush. So it's a very watercolory kind of watercolor. 
the paper does dry very quickly. If I'm just dabbing in a bit of purple to gray this up, make some dark spots. Just to give the painting a little bit of depth. And I'm going in heavy because I want to do some water marks in it in a second. It's puddling a little bit right here. I'll dab that up with a, a dryer brush, a thirsty brush. Make your brush thirsty by dabbing it onto your paper towel. And up here, I'm going to do, see it's drying. So I'm going to do even more darker paint. Okay. No, nah, it's not that much darker. Okay. And it is bleeding quite nicely into the wet on wet, which is quite important. When you mix a, a bluey green with a, with a purple, you don't really get a brown, you get a nice gray. So since this is nice and wet, I'm going to dab my paper towel and see what happens. Now I want to see what happens when I touch it to draw the paint outwards. This is with clear water. Oh yeah, I like that. It's, that's working very well. See, so for cheap paper, now you can see that it's buckling. It's, it's buckling a little bit here, but that's okay. So does my expensive paper. I really, I like to share when I find a good deal because I know that sometimes it's not even about affording. It's about sometimes we find that the paper is so expensive, you know, like you're afraid to, it's too precious. So you don't want to use it. So I always like to pass on the good deals that I find. Now this is getting to the stage where I can add, I'm going to take some clear water on my brush and I just want to add a couple of drops of water to get cauliflowers. I'm deliberately trying to get a cauliflower going. Now this is too dry, I think, to get them. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. I'll be back. It's time to take off the masking fluid. Paper is not ripping. Perfect. And I even blow dried it. Sometimes when you blow dry the masking on, it it tears your it sticks better. It sticks worse. <laughs> sticks more. And here we're going to do a second layer to see how the paper behaves. I'm going to splay my brush. And I'm just dabbing in some darker colors. So I had to speed this up and do a voiceover because my neighbor is addicted to some <laughs> leaf vacuum that they own. So it's very loud. So here I'm just adding, so I made the tree trunk kind of like a light brown and then a darker brown. And I'm just adding a, a few little details here and there. And, um, pre-wetting the background just to dab in some blue to make it look like a sky and the paper is behaving extremely well and here the burnt sienna is just to deepen the color of the tree trunk to give it a bit of life to warm it up a little bit and um, here I'm using the scratching uh, method with the card and it, that too is also reacting very well Okay, so this is in addition to the tree that I painted. I wanted to show you how well this paper works wet on wet. So I'm going to take some nice clean water. And I'm just going to paint a circle, like a ring. And then I'm going to get some color. I just, I have blue sitting here, so I'm going to use the blue. I'm going to drop it in to that ring and it's traveling very well. 
see it's already starting to dry there and maybe that was my my mistake the way I brushed yeah it must have went dry there so it dries very fast that's good to know just dropping in some more paint so unless you have like a lot of water it dries very fast very quickly but I do like the the um, the spreading that you get so I'm going to try a, a circle like a, a full one doesn't have to be perfect just like a puffy cloud or something and then I'm going to get some purple paint so this is dioxazine purple I'm just going to put a drop right in the center and see what it does and that's spreading very nicely I'm going to go around the edges and see what kind now you can see that it's starting to dry a little bit here and there but that's quite nice and you can always move it around like it depends that happens on any paper depends where you have the most water because that it's a push and pull game oh there's a squirrel in my window hello <laughs> um it's a push and pull game with watercolor so you can see that if i have a bit of a puddle it's going to push against the flow but if you leave it long enough it'll spread out all on its own and for the last one I'm going to do a nice kind of boring leaf shape <laughs> and see what I get from a nice green color oh I guess I should mix my own green color because I have some blue sitting here and there now there's quin quinacridone gold in this green and quin gold is like a sunburst it just it touches the the paper this is core quin gold touches the paper and it just there, it, there's a burst it's absolutely gorgeous so great to paint with if you're doing um especially kind of abstracty kind of landscapes like not entirely abstract necessarily but something that's not so realistic because and it's very unpredictable because you you can't really guarantee that it's going to go where you think it's going to go it depends like I said on the amount of water you use and the quin gold here I'll do one just alone so I'm going to do one just just for fun it has nothing to do with the paper but it is showing you that this paper is 90 pounds 5.99 and it, this is fantastic at least to practice on if you don't I realize if you're a professional artist you're not watching my channel anyway if you're a professional <laughs> but I do realize that if you're you know if you, even if you're selling uh, your painting to to a friend or you do want it to last so you may not necessarily need it to want it to be on this paper but it's certainly doing doing a great job for for what I've been using it for okay so now I'm going to show you the quin gold so for I'm just going to put a now it's not sopping wet I'm trying to show you the it's nice it's glistening but it's not sopping so I'm going to go with a different brush to get the quin gold I needed a bit more water in my brush sorry it was a bit dry you see you see that fills the entire circle all by itself just about this was was a, a glob of paint I didn't have enough water but isn't that amazing like look at that so I'm putting a bit more kind of looks like an eyeball Ooh, with all the veins look at that so fantastic 
but core watercolors tend to do this but the Quinn gold is especially so so then if you're doing a leaf you know while it's drying while it's still wet you can always use the Quinn gold to mix you know if you're doing like a fall leaf and you can drop in this color and it it'll still travel really well because it's it's just one of those colors it just does that now uh, I think if I'm not mistaken the Quinn Magenta would do the same let's see so I'm just doing a an oval shape here You can see the the wet. I'm going into a dry paint pot, so I have to make sure I have enough water. That's what happened here before. So there we go. Look at that go. That's core. So if you like this kind of thing, if you like the unpredictable and you love like the beauty of this is the paint set for you. And in case you have never heard of it, it's Q O R. <laughs> so I think this is really very worth your your five ninety nine for a pad of forty sheets, nine by twelve. But it is ninety pounds, which means it's going to buckle a little faster. Um, but it, it dries pretty flat so my painting that I just did is starting to dry and it's pretty it's, that's pretty flat so that was just a quick one I wanted to let you know and uh, I hope you maybe go to your Michaels as I said don't go where the watercolor paper is go where um, I found it in the craft paper section so there were some Crayola um, uh, products and things like that I was just wandering around and that's how, where I found it in that department not where the other watercolor paper is okay so I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel happy watercoloring bye bye